this is another reason that we don't like Commons National Parks. Just to add to the atmosphere of the deep dark forest. We're driving the Pan American Highway from the top of Alaska to the very bottom of Argentina. We've seen grizzly bears with their cubs come face to face with a black wolf, driven to glaciers, and yet really, this journey has only just begun. You find us now in the rugged Pacific Northwest of the United States, discovering some of the most ancient and wild landscapes you only find in storybooks. Except here, it's real. Subscribe and join us for the ride with new videos every Sunday. Earlier this year, somebody drowned in the river here. Well, good morning guys and welcome back to Washington. We left you last week after we reached the furthest, most northwesterly point of the US, which means we've now made it to the furthest north, the south, the east, and pretty much the west. We're actually only about 30 minutes from where we left you last week. We're parked up on the side of the road on this massive stretch of beach, which we pretty much had all to ourselves. Yes, it is just off the road, so it is quite noisy, but after sleeping in Vancouver for four or five weeks on the side of the road, you get used to the noise. But this morning, Chess has gone out for a run. My foot is still sore, so I'm not running at the moment, and that's gonna be my excuse for the next six months, I reckon. Well done. Oh. What a beautiful beach this is. It's a perfect running beach, isn't it? Oh, this is amazing. Good morning, everyone. What a wild and beautiful coastline this is. No dog restrictions on the beach. We've had the place all to ourselves. Washington has been amazing so far. So some of you might be wondering why we haven't hit any of the major national parks here in Washington. And it's the same for most of the states and that the national parks here are not dog friendly at all. They're allowed in your vehicles normally and to like have a wee on the side of the road, but they're not allowed on any of the major trails. So most of the time it isn't worth it for us because we can't go on any of the major hikes and spend a lot of time in the national parks. So we tend to just not go to them. But here on the Olympic Peninsula, there is a very famous national park called Olympic National Park. Park. It's almost a million acres and is one of the largest wilderness areas on the continental United States. There is something in this national park that we cannot miss. So we're going to leave the coast where we've been for the past few days and we're going to turn inland and head right into the very heart of the forest here. We're not even in the National Park yet and already this forest looks amazing. It's like being on a film set. It is, isn't it? It's amazing. I expected to see the predator in there. <laughs> you can't see the predator though, big. Uh, you can when he hasn't got his invisible shield on. We are heading into the Ho Rainforest. It's a thick, dense, temperate rainforest. It's covered in mosses and ferns. It's like something from a Tolkien fantasy or Fern Gully and the road to get there is so long and it just feels like we are driving into Jurassic Park, do you not yeah. think? Like we're just going on and on and deeper and deeper into this like incredible, like ancient looking rainforest. Oh. Rainforest park in full. Oh no. This is another reason that we don't like Cummins National Parks. They're insanely busy to the point where it's almost impossible to park. You can't get into all the good stuff. So for us, seeing as the dogs can't go most of the places in it anyway, it's just never really worth it for us. But we really want to see this rainforest. We've just come to a sign that says the parking is full and it's metered traffic. And there's a massive, massive queue. So there's a sign ahead that says expect delays of up to one hour, 30 minutes. So I'm going to make us some lunch. This is a beauty of having the van. We're just going to ride it out. We're going to ride it out. We're only here once. And this is, if we're going to commit to seeing something in the National Park, we're going to commit to yeah. seeing something in the National Park. So I'm going to make a coffee 
and some lunch because we just stood still and yeah we'll just wait it out oh thank you baby bagel delivered oh yeah oh this is expected days of an hour now my coffee oh no, there's a top of a bagel oh. Three. Is this four, the hut? Five, six, seven. We're eight cars in. Is this the queue? This is the queue, yeah. This is the hut. Oh, we're eight cars to the hut. They're obviously busy for a reason. They're areas of incredible, incredible natural beauty and some of these things that you probably won't find many other places in the world. So I'm not saying they shouldn't be busy. Hi. Hey, I haven't seen that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, England. England. You shift it over? Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Yeah. We're in. Hey, we're in, guys. We're in. Find a parking space. Find a parking space. Look at that. Parking. This is the Hall of Mosses, where a short hike will take you into the most ethereal, lush fairy tale forest you'll likely ever see. Spruce and maple trees soar 200 foot above you, draped in cloaks of moss. Ferns carpet the floor and you'd be forgiven for thinking you've disappeared into a Wonderland storybook. It almost reminds me of like something at Disneyland that someone has created to look like some sort of fantasy world or like a different planet. There's just mosses hanging off everything. It makes it look so old. So the tree is 200 foot tall. And apparently up there you get birds and squirrels or flying squirrels that very, very rarely come down because everything they need is up there. That's incredible. <gasps> look at this. It's like the ant forest in Lord of the Rings. It's amazing. Look at, you can't even see the rings on there, look. Look at them. God, how old must this tree be? Go on, start counting. No. That was absolutely magical, wasn't it? Yeah, that was 100% worth the hour and a half or whatever weight we had. Yeah. 100%. Easy. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. This is alright. We're not getting any solar, but this is okay, isn't it? Look at this, our own little mossy forest for the night. It's perfect, isn't it? This vulture circling overhead and Scout is just watching them intently. It's so funny. Come with me because I just want to make sure that these aren't big, these are dog prints, not big cat prints. They've got their claws out, isn't that right? Yeah. So, so they're dog. They're definitely dog prints, yeah. Or bear. They're not bear prints. Oh, okay. They're, they're just dog prints. They're just dog prints, are they? They're also, yeah, they're too small to be. Anything. What about these? Yeah, they're dog prints. They've got claws. So they're dog prints. You want to take the kayak in it? No, I'm not taking the kayak in this. I'll be, I'll be lost forever. Mm -hmm. We lost the Washington wilderness. Sussing it out, I think. Thinking how like how many layers am I going to lose in this river? Good morning. It has been like sleeping in a cave. <laughs> it's so dark under these trees. I can see it's clear blue sky and sun out. Yeah. Beautiful day. Hello. Look how dark it is in the van. Oh, it's crazy. Right. Should we get up? I think let's get up. Let's get these guys out. Come on then. today. It's a real shame there's no solar here because it really is the kind of place that you could just tuck away for a few days. Okay so our plan today
today is to finish the loop of the Olympic Peninsula and see what it has left to offer. Can you hear that? There's something is rattling in that bloody cupboard up there. Mysterious rattling noise. There's Bigfoot! No, oh, do. fuck off. <laughs> I didn't actually think it was Bigfoot. I didn't know what it was. Oh, I was so I was thinking, right? How can I make it sound like it's like something real? And you, what, <laughs> it took you a second to. Uh... Not impressed. I can't believe we've driven to the Pacific Ocean. I mean, we did see the Pacific Ocean when we were back in California and Mexico, but I mean, it's just mad. Look at these. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs are allowed on the beach, but they've got to be on lead. So I'm grateful that they're allowed on the beach because most of the time they're not. But it does mean I play bloody merry-go-round. <laughs> Look at all this driftwood. It's amazing. Look at this. Look how big this tree is. Uh, do you reckon like this has fallen? Oh wow, that's the root. Do you reckon this has fallen? Obviously this has fallen into the sea tossed around, washed up, but just look how massive it is. Look how big it is. Oh, look at this. Grape View 2021. It's a little painted rock. Oh. Fun fact, we have a painted rock in the van from when we were in Northumberland in the north of England. In what, 2021? Yeah, it must have been. And we keep wanting to put it somewhere, but I know I've had it with it for so long. We don't want to leave it somewhere really far where no one knows what Northumberland is, so we'll probably wait till we're back home and put it somewhere in yeah. the UK. But it's been everywhere with us. <laughs> she loves to. River, what are you digging for? <laughs> oh. I love when she kicks me out like that. You so pretty. The main reason we came to this beach wasn't for the epic driftwood, it was to see the tree of life. It's a Sitka spruce tree that is kind of suspended in the cliff face. All the soil around its root system has eroded away, so it's just kind of clinging there onto the rocks. You can't really see how it's getting any nutrients, but it is thriving. And yeah, it's a bit of a remarkable feat of nature, just this, this tree just suspended in the rock face. This tree shouldn't really be here. It's like a glitch in the matrix. It shouldn't be this healthy, suspended in the air. It's called the tree of life because despite the raging storms, the relentless erosion and roots that hang in midair, it's not just surviving, but thriving, holding fast against the ebb and flow of time. Its entire root system is just in this huge cavity. That's incredible. It's really cool. The only thing is, on a day like this, you've got to get in the Instagram queue. There's a big queue for this tree. <laughs> Last week it was the ferry fiasco where we ended up having to get a ferry at like nine o'clock at night and today we're planning on going to a lake and rounding off our little trip on the peninsula but when I was planning it I must have had a different place put in and I thought it was an hour and a half away but it's actually like three hours away and we had a bit of a late start this morning because by the time we get there it's gonna the dog's gonna need feeding it's all gonna be a bit rushed so we're on a road trip, so we're gonna road trip today for three hours across there. We're gonna get near the lake, find somewhere nice to park up, and then tomorrow morning we're gonna hit the lake properly when we're not gonna be rushed to go and see all. Told you we're rusty after our little break. And so we drove and drove around the bottom of the Olympic Peninsula, and as evening drew in, we found ourselves in the foothills of the Olympic Mountains. Not 
not the day we had planned, but what a beautiful little spot we found. It's so peaceful and quiet here. Shh. Can you hear that? It's like insects. I've not heard that in ages. Heard that for a while. It's so much warmer here as well. Now we've come away from the coast. It was quite chilly there. But it's a lot, lot drier here. Can you hear that? Oh, guys, we just took the dogs out for a walk and all of a sudden we hear these like <gasps> and I reckon I know what it is. Chess thinks it's elk. I reckon it's the Sasquatch. <laughs> I think we found the Sasquatch, guys. There's like, they're literally coming from that direction. Basically, every direction there's grunting noises coming from, so I think it's elk. Oh, it's <laughs> no, it's scary. All right, let's go in. Okay. So we don't think it's elk. No, we don't think it doesn't sound well. From what we've listened to YouTube, it doesn't sound like elk. But it could be a boar. But Scout, his nose is going like tens <laughs> of a dozen. He's going mental. You're not comfortable, are you? Not 100 percent sure. But your barking has stopped them from grunting. I'm going for Sasquatch. <laughs> I reckon we found the Sasquatch. If we have, we found a bloody colony of them, baby. There's about six going off. I reckon probably elk, just doing a noise that is on YouTube, to be I fair. I reckon, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say elk. <laughs> we made it out of there alive. We still have no idea. We still have no idea what those noises were last night. They could have been elk, they could have been birds or owls, no idea. But we're out alive and we're heading to a swimming spot just in time for the rain and the cloud. It just feels like luscious, doesn't it, here? Yeah. Wow. Do you know what? It's so quiet, I can't hear any birds whatsoever and there's thunder rolling overhead too just to add to the atmosphere of the deep dark forest top tip if you've not got walking poles and you come to a really steep downwards hill just do an old band dance and it kind of protects your knees going down the one really sad thing about the swimming hole is that earlier this year somebody drowned in the river here and it's just like a little memorial to him, Joshua. So I might just go for like a little dip <laughs> and not a proper swim. Quite a big, I thought it was like a little swimming hole but it's actually, I mean it's beautiful it is, but it? It, it does look, it's quite deep. That's where we've just come down. And there's a little spring here, which feeds the river. And there's just li this little kind of really blue, blue clear little swimming hole. Right in the middle of the forest. It's glacial. Oh my God. Fresh and cold. Does it feel better now? Oh. oh. Oh gosh. You okay? I beach whale. No, you're not. You're more like a beach sardine. <laughs> like a beach pike. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Come for a swim in the rainforest, they said. There we go. If this isn't love, I don't know what it is. I'm using my body to keep your clothes dry. Oh, thank you, Raymond. Um, I haven't brought a towel with me. You have to shake. Oh, another fish. Is that, I, I, I just caught it in the back. Is it? They're taunting you again. I know. 
Right, I need to put my... Oh no, my feet are wet. That sucks. It's so heartbreaking to see this. I think these were his clothes and flask that he left on the side. And his towel. I know it's not much. This kind of takes us back to what we were saying about the national parks. This feels really, really similar to the whole rainforest we were in the other day, except we didn't have to queue for two hours to get in. You'd be free to bring your dogs on this trail and there's that amazing like turquoise blue swimming hole at the other end. I think on like a hot summer's day, come with your friends, take a picnic. This would be absolutely magical. The national parks are incredible, but there are places like this to be found outside of them and they're definitely worth hunting down if you can. And I've got to say, like being in this rainforest, it's kind of cooler than the whole rainforest because you're not being herded around on a massive boardwalk. You're kind of on your own and you get to experience this huge dark rainforest a little bit more intimately. Sneaky pastries. I yes. Oh look, it's Bigfoot. I thought. Wait. Oh yeah, look. Found him. I thought I would treat you to a homemade apple fritter. Oh my favourite. Yeah. Thank you. And I thought I'd treat myself to one as well. You don't really get apple fritters back in the UK. For those of you that don't know, it's like pastry with bits of apple in, cinnamon. Oh. What is it then? It's like a donut. It's a donut. Okay. It's like a donut with apple bits in, cinnamon, and then drizzled with icing, like runny icing on top. How many They're do you so eat? They're so good. And you don't know what they are? <laughs> well, I don't like donuts, so I'm surprised that I like apple fritters. No, I'm surprised as well. I mean, it's because it's nice and it's got the cinnamon, sort of bits of apple in. Probably sweet and sort of shit. Yeah. Like yeah, that's true. Bit like me. What, sweet and full of shit? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the beach all along the road here, all the way up there, is all private. Most of it's private, so you can't like get down onto it and get to the water. But... We're going to see if I can test out the kayak again, oh, and hopefully I won't capsize. Twenty dollars. State park passes is twenty dollars to go. Twenty dollars. Our state park pass, yeah. the Discover Pass, isn't accepted. Oh, we've already got a national park pass. We've already got a state park pass. For Washington. For Washington. And now you need to pay an additional like twenty dollars. Just for this one. Just just for this one. And you don't even know like what it's like. It's cloudy as miserable today. It'd be, this lake would actually be amazing if it was a clear day. But you can see the haze that's just like chopped off the top of the the mountains and things. Yeah, so normally there's mountains here and the lake is like turquoise. The day use area is just here. And we're hoping to go down there, get the kayak out, go for a little paddle, but it's not the best day for it. I just don't know if it's worth the $20. I think so, yeah, yeah. Like, we haven't been in a rest area for so long, but we just need somewhere easy to stay tonight. It's really quite populated, like, round here, so there aren't many options for wild camping, so I think this will do us for the night. I think so. So while the lasagna is bubbling away on the stove, I realise I haven't filled you in for a couple of weeks on where we are. This is California down here, this is Mexico, we've got Oregon, Washington, and then this is uh, the border with Canada. So last week we crossed over, got the ferry from Whidbey Island over here to Port Townsend. We drove all the way along this northern shore of the Olympic Peninsula which is here all the way up here to Cape Flattery which is the most northwesterly point of the US. We came down here and we went across here and into the Olympic National Park into the Ho Rainforest which as you can see is kind of right in the center of the peninsula. We came back out the Tree of Life was somewhere around here and then we took the long road did we come all the way down here and then back up again? Yep. 
the long road out of the peninsula. Are you sure? Oh, we did, didn't we? And then all the way up here towards Lake Cushman, which is up here. So as you can see, we've done like a big, massive loop of the peninsula. Today we've just driven down the I-5, heading south, and tonight we're somewhere around here. Next on the list is Mount St. Helens, which is just in here. We couldn't miss this. It's the most active volcano in the continental US. And then we are heading west and down the Oregon coast. We've got the candles on, lasagna, it's cold and rainy outside. It feels like November. Holy mother of God. Look at that masterpiece. Oh. Do you want to do the honours? Oh no, you can, okay. 